I'm so grateful this morning. I'm very thankful. For where God has brought me through, I'm grateful. That is why I do what I'm currently doing. I've been betrayed and I've been stabbed in the back, gossip and whatever you can name it. <laughs> but the same thing Jesus faced. So it's not going to be easy work for us. We're going to go through a lot of things. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We're going to be tested. We're going to be, you know, we're going to face trials. We're going to face storms. We're going to face issues. And you know, sometimes the biggest onslaughts come from your family. Yes. Sometimes your husband, your wife, yes. your kids, yes. even people in the church. Yes. When Paul speaks to the church in Ephesians and, and he laid down how to stand strong in Ephesians 6. And he talk about the full armor. Maybe a lot of you have, have heard this, but there's no covering for your back. You've got your shoes and you've got your belt and your breastplate and your, you know, your sword and you've got your helmet. But there's nothing to cover your back. That is where you come in. That is where I come in. Because that is our place of positioning is to cover each other's backs. And we find it is so difficult nowadays, you know what? You cannot really trust even the person sitting next to you. It's so heartbreaking. I know Pastor Steve loves his wife. But you know what? We can only trust God. Our best friends will betray us. Our best friends will turn their back on us. How many of us are sitting here this morning yes. that has been betrayed by family members? Yes. And now there's a, a gap of 10 years, 20 years because of something that has happened. But I know of someone that has died for all the issues, all the sins, all the everything that we can think of. And that's why I'm, my heart is so full this morning. Thanks, Uncle John. For that key of G, I, I, I saw, you know, Brother Clive was trying to, to get into heaven with that F key or what, what's it, B flat. <laughs> but I thank God for all the keys. <laughs> but Brother Clive did well. Let's give him a hand, family. Each week you will see a different, each week you will see a different person leading is because um, we've been given that chance to grow ourselves in the Lord. And we believe, and as I'm going to speak also this morning on the body of Christ, and um, it's not only from my side, but you know, it's biblical that we all have something that God has given us. Yes. This morning, I want to title my message, Together We Can Do More. Amen. 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 It's not only the ANC that can, the people, the supporters can say, Together We Can Do More. Some, I see some smiles. I see, I see. No, I'm not a politician. I'm not racist. I'm just realistic this morning. <laughs> Amen. The title of my message this morning is Together We Can Do More. First Corinthians chapter 12. I'm reading from a Thompson's Saint Reference Bible. So my version might differ from yours. It's not because this is not a Bible, it's just a different version. There's a lot of versions. So yours is going to sound a bit different than mine. First Corinthians 12. And I'm going to read from verse 12. The heading there is one body, many parts. The body, verse 12, the body is a unit. Though it is made up of many parts. And though all parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. Verse 26, chapter 12, verse 26. If one part suffers, 
Every part suffers with it. I don't know yeah. how many people has had stomach pain. Yeah. Has had a headache. Yeah. Pain in your shoulders, pain, back pain. A problem with your knee, a problem with your foot. If one part is paining and is one part is not well, yeah. your whole body doesn't feel well. <laughs> you can have a thorn. Step into a thorn with your foot. And your whole body will shock, will get into that shock because it is part of the body. Yes. And this morning, I want us to just realize that we are one body with many parts. Yes. Amen? Amen? We are one body with many parts. And as we can see that our human body, our body that, that we are in, it's got a brain, there's a heart, there's a lot of, there's a liver, you know, you've got your two kidneys, you've got two lungs, you've got your pancreas, you've got your, uh, uh, um, you know, your digestive system. All your main organs are in the upper part of your body. You've got your nervous system, which is controlled also by the brain. The brain, in fact, controls everything. You've got your blood vessels, you've got all the little cells that form, you know, that make up your body. You've got the skin, which is the biggest organ in your body. You've got your eyes, you've got your ears, you've got, you know, the, your smell and hearing and all these things. And if the body don't work together, there's going to be a handicap, you're going to have a disability. If the body is not functioning together, if it is not working together. If a car don't have plugs, it's not going to start. If there's no oil in your car, the engine is not going to agree with you. If you don't have wipers on your car and you try to drive in the rain, there's going to be a problem. And all these things, they make up one unit. I want to I want to I want to make this powerful statement. It says we are all we are all born originals. But some die a copy. We are all born originals. But some people die as a copy. You know why friends? You know why family? It's because we want to be like someone else. Yeah. I cannot be T.D. Jakes. Yeah. I cannot be Dr. Miles Monroe. I cannot be Mahatma Gandhi or, or I come close to with the outfit. But I cannot be him. <laughs> you cannot be Mother Teresa. Yeah. You cannot be Florence Nightingale or Thomas Edison. You must be yourself. Nice. And Paul he makes it very clear and it is so strange when Paul talks to the church in Corinth just in the previous chapter he was talking about the communion table and Paul says at the communion table he reminds them there must be divisions among you. Yeah. But it is strange to say that in the body of Christ in a unit that's supposed to flow and function well and function as a unit and in unity there is divisions and right after paul is speaking to the church in corinth and is and is and is and is in in, in chapter 12 and is laying out the different gifts which i'm just gonna touch on this morning he's speaking about the different gifts right after he's laying out you know you get your your, your apostolic gift and you get your, your your power gives your healing and your utterance gifts and you know prophesying and speaking in tongues and you know word of wisdom and word of knowledge right after that in chapter 13 he's speaking about love even if you have this type of gift and you don't have love because people place a big emphasis on the gift but they are missing one thing short, one special ingredient. Jesus never operated without this ingredient and that is love. And I was just thinking, you know what, um, 
Jesus, in his ministry that they had for, you know, about three and a half, four years, he gathered for himself 12 disciples. Now, Jesus, he didn't need those disciples. Everything that he did, every miracle that he performed, he did on his own. But he wanted to show us. He had a team. And there's no I in the word team. So why did Jesus need people around him? Like the disciples. Why is there asses? Why is there deacons? Why is there elders? Why is there a pianist? Why is there a singer? Why is there a guitarist and a bass guitarist? And you know, why is there a drummer? Because one person cannot do everything. Amen. One body, many parts. Just think about it. And Paul, he says it in, in, you know, in, in this book here, in this first letter to the church in Corinth, he says, if the body, if the body was just one eye, I mean, how, how stupid would you look like, you know, like these minions with a, <laughs> you see the minions was get just, just one eye. And just think about it, if we didn't have a nose, no ears, or maybe not even no end. Because our brain is here, it's on top. And we see it, you know, in churches that is that people sometimes, you know, uh, you know, fight for a position or, or, or you know, they desire, uh, you know, a position that someone else already has. But you have something that God has given you. God has given each and every one of us a gift. And that is biblical. Each member of the body is vital and is irreplaceable. Yeah. If you have one kidney sword, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy to have one. There are a lot of people that have, that, that has survived without, with, you know, with one kidney. If your pancreas doesn't work properly, if it doesn't give that insulin to the body, you'll find out that you'll have diabetes. Because of that organ pancreas there. So that insulin that the pancreas give to your body, the heart cannot give it, although the heart is a very, you know, the heart is like, it's like one of the main organs in the body. Without the heart, no one will get blood because the heart is the, is that pump that pumps the blood, the blood to your whole body, right through your system. It comes from the heart. So everyone has their part. The lungs, they have their part. The kidneys, they have their part. But just imagine the, the, the feet, we had to breathe through our feet. We had to smell through our... <coughs> or if we are full and we had too much pizza and we now go sit on the toilet pot and now we have to sit with our ears like this on the, on the toilet because it's coming out this way. So each and every part plays its role and is there for a purpose. God has created us the way we are because we've got a purpose. That is why He created us. Uncle John has got big shoulders. I've got smaller shoulders than Uncle John. So if I want that big shoulders, I need to pump for 18 years because Uncle John spent 18 years in the gym to look. Close to Arnold Schwarzenegger, but but Uncle John almost see. Family, we all have something, we all receive something from the Lord. And let us go to first Peter 4 verse 10 this morning. I want to show us this morning that while we are desiring someone else's gift and someone else's talent, God has given us our own. I cannot play the keyboard. I have to, if, if I want to play the keyboard, I must speak to Uncle John. Teach me. I mustn't be angry because not, I cannot play the keyboard the way Uncle John plays it. God has given me something else that, that Uncle John maybe don't have. We are originals. I don't want to die of fake. <laughs> As they say in Afrikaans, a na aap is an original aapi. 
why would I, why would I, why would I try to sing like him? I'm gonna mess up. I'm gonna chase the whole neighborhood away with my singing. But if King sing, if Kim sings, you know something happens because she's got that gift. God has given that to Kim. You've got something that God has given you. You have to discover what is your purpose and your gift that God has given you. Look, let's just listen to the scripture. First Peter 4, I'm going to read from verse 8. Above all, love each other deeply. Wow. Not just your wife. Not just your husband, your kids. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sin. Love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sin. Verse 9, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. I'm not going to go very much into that. If someone comes to your house, offer them something. Take a seat. You want some coffee, juice, water, Milo, hot chocolate. Uncle John likes Lipton tea, iced tea, the green tea one, zero sugar, hospitality. But this is my this is my verse that I want to come to verse ten. It says, each one, and that means. Each one of us, each one should use whatever gift he has received. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others. Yes. So your gift is not for yourself. Yes. God has given each and every one of us a gift to serve others. Faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. About a, a few years ago, I think it was, you know, I think just over about 10 years, just over 10 years. Um, I went to a, a prayer meeting in Tafelsach. One of my friends invited me to a prayer meeting. And a certain lady, she went off in a tongue. And she started prophesying. So Paul makes it very clear when he speaks about if someone is speaking in a tongue, there must be someone that's going to lay out whatever that person. You cannot lay it out by yourself. <laughs> like what happened in Oatswaran. Two guys were caught out in Oatswaran. One was sitting in front. Just before Christmas, one sitting in front. They, 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 they organized this whole thing. One is sitting in front and one sitting in the back. The other one said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak in a tongue and you, you will lay it out. Parandas, 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 parandas. The one, the, the one guy went off. And the other one said, you know, the interpretation is Merry Christmas and have a Happy New Year. This lady she went off in the tongue. This lady went off in the tongue and she was caught out the end of the service because she wanted to, to emulate and to, to, to be like the pastor's wife because the pastor's wife was used mightily in the prophetic ministry. And what happened was there was a big fight right after that service. Because of someone that wanting to be like someone else. There's an old song, an old song, worldly song that says, Be yourself, no matter what they say. Be yourself, no matter what they say. God has given each and every one of us something special. Let us turn to the book of Romans very quickly. The book of Romans chapter 12. I'm going to read from verse 4. Romans 12, 4. Just as each of us has one body with many members, 
and these members do not have all the same function so in Christ we who are many form one body and each member belongs to all the others so our arms there's a joint but it's attached to the body your fingers are on your hands it's attached to your arm and you've got your different muscles your with your with your feet you've got your five toes which are attached to your feet and to your leg i've never seen someone a body where the the guy is walking and his feet is coming behind him or someone who wants to go somewhere have to look where's his eyes i must get my eyes because my eyes must not see where i must going no they are one one of the prayers of jesus was in in john 17 verse 20 to 21 he said father he prayed he prayed firstly he prayed for himself then he prayed for his disciples and then in that same chapter he prayed for the for us he prayed for the believers. He says, Father, make them one as we are one. But we found in the church that you know, there's a lot of divisions. There's a lot of fighting because I want to be this. I want to be that. I want to do this. I want to do that. But God has given you something. And I just want to, I just want to give this for free, beloveds. There's nothing that we can do that can make God give us a certain gift. God, given, God is giving any gift freely to anyone who He wants to give it. So if you didn't have, you didn't get that voice to sing, don't be angry at Kim. Because she didn't create singing, it came from God. Amen, beloved. Kim didn't buy, go, go to shop and say, you know what, I need a soprano voice. This is my, my, my money. Please. No. Yeah. It comes from God. God is handing out the gifts to whom he wants. Yes. I cannot be like evangelist Damien. I cannot be like Pastor Steve. Pastor Steve is unique and is original and is special made. You are a designer's original. Yes. You are perfect in God. How God has created you. Yes. I don't want to be like Uncle John. Yes. I want to be like myself. Yes. I'm going to miss out on being Desmond because I tried to be Uncle John and now I miss out what God has given for Desmond in the future because I'm walking in Uncle John's shoes. But God has placed this road for me here. I must walk in what God wants me to walk. I must go where God wants me to go. Together, we can do more. We need each and every one of you. God needs us to operate and function as one unit. If you play in a team, no one can, can play alone, even as good as you know the best footballers and, 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 and basketball players and Whoever plays in a team, whoever they are that sign, I'm not going to mention the names, but we know who's the guys that are, you know, that always gets the accolades and all, this, all the time get the awards, teams that, are, that sign. They cannot do it alone. We must work together. We can do so much more if we work together. If, we, if I do what I must do, and you do what you must do, together we can achieve great things. But nowadays, friends and family, is evangelist is not here. Now I'm thinking, no, you know what? I'm not coming to church again because I see, you know, that guy wasn't in church, so I'm going to stay also away. I see one of the deacons wasn't there. I see one of the pastors isn't here. Pastor Brandon is in, in Durban, and he will, he will be with us next week. He's just on a break. So why can he take a break? I can also stay out. Yeah. 
just think about it. If, 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 if 50 of us sitting here decided, you know what? It's such a lovely day. Let us go to Nandi Beach. <laughs> Let us take a drive there to, to Pavilion. Let us go there to Makassar. The, you know, the water is nice there. 50 of us. What would we have here? Yeah. Family, I'm talking about not for myself. Yeah. You, you're not here because of me. You're not here because of Pastor Brandon, yeah. Uncle John. We are here because God has done something for us. You are here because God has done something for you. Not because of me. I cannot save you. I cannot bless you. God is God. Yes. I'm here because of what God has done for me, how God has provided for me. Yes. But now, because Pastor Steve is not here, you know what? Why am I actually... Look there. They can do what they want to do, so it's fine. I can also say them. Yeah. Did God save you because of someone else? No. no. In fact, the Bible says that while we were still not right, yeah. not in order, out of order, reckless, yeah. someone died for us. If God sort of says, you know what? I don't like this guy, Jonathan, man. He don't listen to me. So I'll just die for the others. I don't worry. He must sort out himself. No. No. One body, many parts. And we need us. We need more deacons in the church. We need more guitars in the church. We need more singers. We need more people to help and say, how can I help you? If and we can say, here's that. And they take your money, end of the month, they will take your money. How can we help you? <laughs> but they don't help you for free. No. There's something in for them. That's why they say, how can I help you, sir? Because at the end of the month, they know they're going to get their five rand from 10, 20 million or billion people, which make, which make them so rich. But God doesn't work like that. Whatever we do for God, He will reward us according to 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Our labor in the Lord is not in vain. Nothing that we do here in the house of the Lord, even if you do the announcements, Mary Ann, even if you have to come sweep outside, even if you have to put up one of the flags, even if you have to clean the toilets, even if you have to do it alone, do it because God has done something for you. Do it. Don't look out. Uh, you know what? Well, that this one is not here, that one is not here. No. Yeah. A lot of people are going to stay behind because they're going to look, where's this person? Then that person is in heaven. You will look, where's this guy? Where's this? Because you're looking at, our eyes must be on him. Yeah. Our focus, you know, people will distract you. If your focus is not on God, you will be distracted. You will never get to your blessing. You will never get to the point where God wants to excel you in life. Because you're looking at someone else yeah. and not staying focused. Yeah. Right. One body, many parts. Amen. So you get you, you get your fivefold ministry. Mm. I'm drawing to a close now. You get your fivefold ministry. Let us just go to Ephesians quickly and look at the fivefold ministry. You get the fivefold ministry, then you get your nine gifts. Of the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit gift, and then you get your 14 motivational gifts. Oh, I can, I, I can, I can, I can hear the voices. How oh, I'm, I'm gonna around that lunch table. Who does he think he is? You know what, family? I'm here because what God has done in my life. Amen. If you don't like it, it's, it's, it's your problem. Yeah. Even if evangelism is on there, I will still serve God. Amen. It was difficult for Job too. It was difficult for him too. To lose everything. But because Job knew who his source is. Yeah. I know who my source is. 
I'm connected to the vine. Yeah. I'm connected to the vine. He, that is my source. Yes. God is my, is, you know, he's over Jaira. He's my source. He provides. Yes. He helps me. Mm. When I was down and out, God stepped in. He carry you in the difficult times. Yes. But we need each other. Just think of it. If you were down and out, and here you get a phone call. Hey, who's this? No, it's Brayden. Hey, how are you doing? I haven't seen you, man, in a while. Doesn't it make you feel good? Yeah. If you're not feeling well, and here you get the SMS right. from Kim yeah. to say, I miss you. How are you doing? <laughs> One body, many parts. Yes. What is your job? Why are you here? Why did God create you? Why am I here? What is my, what is my role that I, that, that I need to play? Jesus had role players, you know. Judas had to put him. It was set out like that. God, God knew that. The devil was going to tempt him three times. It was set out like that. Planned already. Joseph had to go through what he go through because God knew at the end what is waiting for him. Because his family was the bigger picture. The world was the bigger picture. But God needed someone to go through that process to form his character and shape him so that he can be a blessing to the body. When God blesses you, it's never for yourself. It's for the body of Christ. Isn't it nice, family, when we sit in, in the church one day, we can say, we build that church. Right. <laughs> I'm not, I build that church. No, it's not I. We, together. We work for it. We pray together. We fast together. We stand together for this thing. We bought this new guitar. This, it's not a new guitar. I'm just making an example. And now you can feel proud. You know what? I contributed towards that thing. I feel proud because this is our guitar. This is our home. This is our pulpit. We, God has given us that grace. We work together for this thing. In a lot of families, people are arguing about who's, I, I, I put on, you know, toilet roll. It's your turn. You must, you must, you, it's your turn now to buy soap. It's your turn to buy electricity. It's your turn now to buy toothpaste. It's your turn to do this. It's your turn. Division. Amen. And Rick Godwin, he makes this statement. He says, where there is more than one vision, there is division. When there's more vision, there is division. And the Bible makes it very clear. Where there is unity. You know, I love, I just love that scripture, Uncle John. I just love that. Isn't it nice? We, Auntie Michelle come with a plan. And, I, and Auntie Michelle says, you know what, John, I think we should do this. And Uncle John said, you know what, Michelle, I believe we must do this. And together, with this unity, God commands a blessing. He forces that blessing out on you. Even if you don't like it, even if someone else don't like it, your family don't like it, He commands that blessing. Please, Michael, go down and bless that family. Amen. Please, Gabriel, go visit yes. the Fortune family and please them out of their socks. God commands it, but there must be unity. Hallelujah. We must work together. We must stand together, pray together, yes. help one another. Yes. Together, yes. we can do more. Amen. Ephesians 4, Amen. verse 11. It was He. Who gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. To prepare God's people for works of service. So that the body of Christ may be built up. The fivefold ministry isn't here just because, you know what, to look good. No. We're here to edify. We're here to encourage. We're here to help and serve one another. To build up the church. 
So if you see that Toyota Etios coming around, make sure there's enough coffee. <laughs> Thank you. Brother Clive already know. No sugar. It's been it's been it's been three weeks now, for your family. No brown sugar, no white sugar. I'm working on it. I'd really like to lead by example. I want to work on my health. I've, I'm 45. I'm healthy family. I don't have any. You don't think because I drop my sugar, I'm diabetic. No, I'm not. Please, I'm healthy. Foot as a fiddle as the word goes. <laughs> Verse 13. Until we all reach ah family. For Ephesians 4:13. Until we all reach unity in the faith. Yes. Just think about it, Pastor Steve. Yes. If you and your wife come in here Friday and there's no youth coming up, turning up. Pastor Steve is not going to feel well. Even though he's a man of God, even though he's strong in the Lord, even though he's been serving God for a lot of years, you're going to feel down. Because you know what, family? Ministry is about people. No people, no ministry. What would happen, Sister Joan, if you're not going to be here? What would happen, Kim, if Kim's not here? What would happen if there's no sound team, no media team? Yeah. Who's going to operate there? What would happen if Brother Aubrey stay at home and if you, you know what? There's a nice, um, there's, there's World Cup this morning. I'm going to watch that World Cup. There's, then someone has to, to go there. We need one another. Yeah. I want to, you know, I just, you know, Daniel. Daniel, can you just stand? That is Daniel family. About two years ago, I think it's in 2020 or 2019. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel. You may be seated. I was sitting with Pastor Jonathan in the office and Daniel came in. And you know what struck me so much? What the reason why I single out him because he was one of the few that came with this question. Or you know, with this thing on his heart. He said, Pastor, you know what? I you know, speaking to Pastor Jonathan. I was thinking of, is there anything that I can do to help in the church? Amen. Listen, imagine, here a child comes and says, Mommy, can, can I help with anything? Is there anything that I can do, Mommy? Yeah. Is there anything, Daddy, that I can do? Yeah. Is there anything that I can assist you with? Isn't that nice? Yeah. You, 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 feel, you can assume a field, you know what? You've got people that is with you. Yes. You feel people is standing with you. Hey, how can I help you? No, man. Brother, are you sure? I see you. you you're struggling with, with a tire. Can I help you? Brother, sister, can I? Is there something that I can do? We are here to help one another. Let me just finish this verse. Until we all reach unity in the fight and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature at attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Even Jesus, he never did any miracle outside the will of his Father. They all together in one. The Holy Spirit will complement Jesus. Jesus will complement the Holy Spirit. They will all complement the Father. The Father said, I have, I have highly exalted Him and have given Him a name that is above every other name. He's talking about His Son. They complement one another, not look down on one another. Yes. They need one another. God needed Jesus. The Holy Spirit is there. But the work is one. The work is one. Psalm 133 verse 1 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. In unity. You can achieve a lot of things in unity. Let us just go to a, draw to a close this morning. 
And I want to leave four questions with you guys this morning, with your family. So you say, Brother Desmond, I would really, you know, love to discover who I am in Christ. My purpose, who, who I really am. Why am I really here? No, we're not here just, for, just to come to church. No, we, each and every one of us has something inside of us. If you can make good food, hospitality and catering, that is your department. If you can sing good, if you, if, if you know, you know God has given you or you desire to become a musician, speak to Uncle John, speak to Kim. Guys, I would love to get involved. Pastor Steve, you know, my heart is really, you know, in youth, I like to work with the youngsters. Come speak to Pastor Steve, how can I help you? If you, if you, if you are good with children and, and, and you like children and you love working with children, you see, you say, Sister Sandy, you know, how, 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 how can I help you guys? Is there anything that I can assist you with? They need more teachers. Yeah. Yes. We need more assists, we need more deacons. Daniel said, how can I help you? He didn't say, Pastor, I will help you if you give me so and so much money at the end of the month. No, no conditions. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? Yes. Someone come and say, you know what? No price, I'll help you at, 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 at my own expense. Don't worry, don't worry, brother. I'll do it for you absolutely free. Yes. Nowadays, everything is just for free. <laughs> you want everything, mahala. No. Doesn't work like that. Number one, what is my passion? What is your passion? What do you like? What do you love to do? There must be something that you like. What are my gifts? What am I gifted in? There is something that you, that you are gifted in. What is it that God has given me the ability to do well? Each and every one of us has that. Sometimes we look at, 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 at a person and we think, you know what? This person is so stingy. This person will never take out a cent out of the pocket. So that person cannot, cannot work there with the, with the finances or say, you know what? They work in that department. No. Maybe that person is good in administration. Maybe that person is good in, you know, just being an assistant. But it is something that you can do. I want to make this powerful statement as I, as I close. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. What is it that you desire this morning? What is it that you are longing for this morning? God can give it to you. Maybe if you just give yourself. Like the chorus says, I give myself away. I give myself away so you. Lord, I'm available to you. My eyes, my ears, my, my, my hands, my feet. Lord, I'm available to you. Yes. Pastor, I'm available. Kim, I'm available, Uncle John. Is there anything? I want to I wanna see this ministry grow. I want to see JCC go forward. What can I do to help? Together we can do more. We need your help. We need your support. Pastor Brandon Priest, the other day, we must uplift. There must be support. We cannot, we cannot do it. Maya Angelou, and I want to close off, she made this statement. She says, as, as I grow older, you know what? I discover that I've got Two hands. Maya Angelou. He says, as he grow older, she discover that she's got two hands. One for helping herself and one for helping others. Jesus came to serve. He came to help. He helped us and he's still helping us. He's still supporting us. He's still looking after us. While we are sleeping, the Bible says, He don't slumbers. 
He don't sleep. He watches over us. Even though people might steal from you. Even though people might rob you. Even if you feel maybe you've run a loss over the years. I want to tell you. God knows about it. He's preparing something for you. If you are willing to say, you know what? Father, I've got little. I've got only the two loaves and five fish. Or five fish and two loaves. Lord, I've only got this little oil. Don't worry about yourself. There might be a lady down the road that needs that oil. That needs that bread. That needs that flour. That needs that spaghetti. Go down the road. So, help someone. Little becomes much. When you place it in the master's hand.